dear students of communicative English. Today we shall discuss the topic direct and indirect speech. Now this is a very very important aspect in grammar. So right from 6th standard you have been learning this and this is very very useful because we apply this in our day to day life. Now let us move into the lesson. So this is direct and indirect speech. Now what do you mean by direct speech? When I tell you something face to face. When I speak to you using my own words, then it is direct speech. If you go home and report this to your mother, to your parents, to your brother, to your friend or somebody else, like this was conveyed by my teacher. So that is how you would say it. So you report the incident in your own words. You do not use the speaker's words, but you do it using your own words. So since you are reporting, it is also called reported speech or the indirect speech. Now let us analyze this in a step by step manner. Now I shall start with statements. Now you have to pay attention to certain things. I will give an example of a sentence here. Ramesh said, I am not well. So, Ramesh said, I am not well. Now, you find two verbs here. This is one and this is the other. Now, this verb is called the reporting verb. Then you got some words within the quote. Now, this is the verb within the quote or the reported verb as we see later on. Now, here Ramesh said, I am not well. So, when you transform this from the direct into the indirect, you use a linker, a connector, Ramesh said that. Now you remove the punctuation marks, you remove this comma here, you remove the inverted quotes here. So Ramesh said that, Ramesh is going to express something about himself. So this pronoun I represents Ramesh. So when we write it, we use the third person, he. Now am is of the present tense, you change it into the past tense, he was not well. So, certain changes are made when the reporting verb is of the past tense. Now, I consider two sentences where the reporting verb is of the simple present or the simple future. Ramesh says, I am not well. So, he is doing this at the moment. So, Ramesh says that, again this I refers to the speaker Ramesh, so he, but because the reporting verb is of the simple present, you do not make any change in the tense form of the verb within the quotes. So, according to this pronoun, personal pronoun I, you use am. When you use the third person, you use is which is of the simple present tense. Ramesh says that he is not well. Now yet another sentence. Ramesh will say, I am going to give Ramesh some job and I know that he will say I am not well. So Ramesh will say that Again, this pronoun refers to Ramesh. So, he, again you use is, no change in the tense form because he has not yet uttered this. He is going to say, he will say, I am not well. So, he will say that he is not well. So, please bear this in mind so that you do not make any mistake in the tense form while transforming. So, only when the reporting verb is of the past tense, we make certain changes to the tense form of the verb within the quotes. We shall analyze that step by step, but remember that when the reporting verb is of the simple present or of the future, the tense form of the verb within the quotes does not undergo any change. It remains in the same tense. This is a very important rule so that you will not make any mistake in your transformation in the examination. Now when the verb is of various tenses, let us see what changes we do to the verb 
while converting the sentence from the direct into the indirect. Now, if the verb within the quotes is of the simple present, this is of the direct speech, it changes to simple past in the indirect speech. Now, if it is present continuous, it changes to past continuous. If it is of the present perfect tense, it changes into the past perfect tense. Then present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous changes to past perfect continuous. Now, let us look at some words, adverbs, adjectives. So, these changes to those. Now, in this case, suppose I use simple past, then I either have the simple past here or the past perfect. If it is of the simple past, it may be retained or I can have the past perfect both are acceptable. Now, these changes to those, this changes to that, now changes to then, ago changes to before. Now, as I told you, we make certain changes in the adjectives, in the adverbs, in the pronouns, in the modals. Now, let us see how these changes are carried out. So, changes to very. Today changes to that day. Tomorrow changes to the next day. Yesterday changes to the previous day or the day before. Last year, the previous year. Suppose you have these words like here, it changes to there. Okay. Now, when we consider modals, will changes to would, shall changes to would again because it is not a condition. I will explain this with examples. Can changes to could, may changes to might, must changes to had to. Now, if the speaker is of the first person, then I remains the same. I will explain this with an example. <coughs> I say I am not well. So, I explain that or I stated that or just I said that I was not well. So, here there is no change in the pronoun. Now, if the speaker is of the third person, then this personal pronoun changes into he or she according to the gender of the person. For example, I gave you a sentence, Ramesh said, I am not well. Now, we know that the speaker is Ramesh. So, masculine gender. So, when you change it, you write it this way, Ramesh said that. Now, this pronoun I refers to Ramesh. So, he, of course, present tense changes to past tense. So, he was not well. Then these pronouns we changes to they as changes to them. I shall give you examples and describe all these. Now, let us see how to transform these sentences from the direct into the indirect. Now, all these are statements. Now, the reporting verb is of the past tense. So, I make certain changes as indicated to you earlier in the verb within the quotes. And moreover, you can use certain words like advised or narrated or stated or asserted depending upon the situation and depending upon the tone of the speaker. Now, Another important rule, you might get this under error spotting also, those questions carry one mark each. Now, said to, whenever you have said to, you have the object here. So, said to gets changed to told and you should never have to after told. Do not ever say Ravi told to his brother, it is always Ravi told his brother. So, remember it is like a formula said to is equal to told, okay. Whenever you have, you have said to someone then it gets changed to told. 
Now Ravi said to his brother. So Ravi told his brother. Ravi told his brother. Immediately bring in the linker that. So no quotes. Tomorrow we are going on a picnic to the theme park. Now we is plural. It refers to Ravi and his friends or maybe Ravi and his brother. So whatever it is, it is plural. So Ravi told his brother that they, now are going is of the present continuous tense. This changes into the past continuous tense. Brother that they were going on a picnic where to the theme park when, remember tomorrow changes to the next day. Full stop. Okay. So, no quotes, you bring in the linker there and you make the changes in the pronoun and in the tense form. Now, Keshav said to his father, I did not attend the session yesterday. So, Keshav, you can say admitted to his father or explained to his father. Okay. So, Keshav explained to his father. that. Now, I refers to Keshav. So, changes to he. Now, did not attend. So, this is past tense. So, I use the past perfect tense that he had not attended the session. Yesterday changes to the previous day. So, Keshav admitted to his father or explained to his father that he had not attended the session the previous day. Now, look at the next sentence. Mukund said, I was cleaning my room this morning. So, Mukund, you can have stated that or just the same verb here said that. I refers to Mukund, again max, masculine gender. So, he was cleaning. This is of the past continuous tense. So, I change it into the past perfect continuous tense. He had been cleaning. Now, my room refers to Mukun's room. So, his room. Remember, this should be changed into that. So, that morning. So, did you get it? Mukun said, I was cleaning my room this morning. Mukun said that he had been cleaning his room that morning. Veena said to her brother, so, again you got said to, so it is told. So, Veena told her brother, immediately bring in the linker that, I have informed your master, I refers to Veena. So, feminine gender, she have informed present perfect changes to past perfect, had informed. Now, who has she informed now? Your master, that is her brother's master. So, his master, what is she informed of the delay? So, you write your answer and check it up with the question. See whether you carried out all the paths which have to be transformed properly. Now, under interrogative sentences, you got two types. One is WH questions and the other is yes or no questions. Now, let us discuss them in detail. Now, under WH questions, you, you got words such as what, where, why, when, how. Now, in such types of questions, see how they are combined. This part and then the utterances. The stranger said to the boy. So, whenever it is an interrogative sentence, you always use the term, the verb asked. So, the stranger asked the boy. Remember students, you should never write that after asked. Here you should never use that. So, the stranger asked the boy. Now, what does he ask? What is your name? So, in under WH questions, you retain the WH question as it is. So, ask the boy what? Now comes your change. You got the verb here. Now, look at this part. What is your name? So, change it into what? You were refers to the boy. So, the pronoun is his. Say to the boy, your name. So, his. What his name was. So, present tense is changed into past tense and there is an inversion. The verb comes only later because if I say what was his name, it is still a question. Understood? 
my job is to convert the question into a statement. So, I take it to the end part after his name. Ask the boy what his name was. And he asked one more question. So, you can say he further questioned the boy or asked the boy. Now, where do you live? Again, where is a WH question? So, I retain the word as it is. Now, forget do. Look at this part. Where do you live? So, you pronoun, it refers to the boy. So, I use he, where he. Now, do live is present tense. So, I convert it into the past tense. Where he lived. He further asked the boy where he lived. Is it clear to you? The stranger asked the boy what his name was. What is your name? What his name was. Where do you live? He further asked the boy where he lived. Full stop. Don't ever forget to place a full stop there. Don't put a question mark. Be very careful about it. Because all punctuations carry marks in this transformation. Now next one. The teacher said to Rohit ends with a question mark. So the teacher asked Rohit or the teacher inquired Rohit. Again this is a WH question. So, remove the quotes, remove the capital. So, small w, y. Where you absent? Forget this. Look at this part. You refers to Rohit. Masculine gender. Where? Past tense. So, I could use the past perfect tense. Why he had been absent. Yesterday changes to the previous day. So, the teacher inquired Rohit or asked Rohit why he had been absent the previous day. The officer said to the visitor. So, once again question. So, the officer asked the visitor. You could even have inquired here. It is applicable to the situation. WH question. So, small w when forget did. U refers to the visitor. I assume that the visitor is a male. So, when he now did past tense. So, past perfect tense had submitted the documents. He also asked him who small w collected past tense. So, past perfect tense who had collected it from U refers to the visitor. So, again I have him. The officer asked the visitor when he had submitted the documents. When did you submit the documents? When he had submitted the documents. Who collected it from you? He also asked him who had collected it from him. Or you can say the officer also wanted to know who had collected it from him. The boy said to his teacher. Again a question. So, the boy asked his teacher or inquired his teacher how much. So, WH question remains the same. How also comes under the WH category. How much? Now, remove this I. I refers to the boy. So, how much he bring it to the beginning here. Have scored before the verb. So, have scored changes to had scored. How much he had scored? Where? In the test. The boy asked his teacher how much he had scored in the test. Okay, So, this is how you carry out the conversion. Now, for WH questions, we have seen that we retain the WH question as it is. Now, for yes or no questions, there is a slight change. Now, what do you mean by yes or no questions? If I ask you something, your reply would be yes and so on or no or so on. For example, did you break the glass? The answer would be yes, I broke the glass or no. I did not break the glass. So, such questions are called yes or no questions. So, how do we transform these? Let us see these examples. Vimala said to her father, will you take me to the zoo tomorrow? So, Vimala asked her father. Now, why is this a yes or no question? The father would reply, yes, I shall take you to the zoo or no, I will not take you to the zoo. So, such questions are called yes or no questions. Vimala asked her father. If, now remember you can use if or whether, but if you are not sure of the spelling, it is better to use if. So, if, now you refers to the father, if he will changes to would, if 
he would take me refers to vimala feminine gender so take her to the zoo tomorrow changes to the next day so vimala asked her father if he would take her to the zoo tomorrow the next day now sara said to her sister can you lend me your mobile for a day so it's a very dangerous question here so sara asked her sister if she now normally can changes to could but here this is a possibility so if she would it's a request so you politely use the word would the model would if she would lend now the speaker is sara me refers to sara feminine gender lend her again you get another her because your mobile refers to sister's mobile so if she would lend her if you want you can place a comma her mobile for a day so it is slightly complicated here sara asked her sister if she would lend her her mobile for a day now seema said to sarala so seema asked sarala if now do speak present tense so past tense is spoke use the pronoun that is used here so it refers to sarala if she spoke french so seema asked sarala if she spoke french now vinod said to his brother it's a question obviously so vinod asked his brother now if it is a statement for shall be you suggested here he is asking a question he wants to know the opinion so vinod asked his brother if they could so he wants to know whether it is possible for them to participate in the competition so vinod asked his brother if they could participate in the show the next month or the following month okay so this is how you transform these remember for your so no questions you have if for whether we move on to the third category exclamations now you could say depending upon the emotion there whether it is grief or sorrow or joy you can say exclaimed with wonder exclaimed with joy exclaimed with surprise exclaimed with sorrow or sorrowfully exclaimed so depending upon the situation you could choose an appropriate word remember these feelings these emotions are to be conveyed only through the term that you use so the child said oh what a huge building so this is one of wonder or surprise so the child exclaimed how do you bring in that exclamatory mark here through the word exclaimed exclaim that similar to your statements you use the term the linker that that now what a huge building the child is looking at some building so you can even say exclaimed in wonder or exclaimed with wonder exclaimed with wonder or surprise or you can simply say the child exclaimed that it was a huge building the child exclaimed with wonder or the child exclaimed with surprise or the child exclaimed that it was a huge building now here this is one of dejection so the captain exclaimed with sorrow so bring in the linker that now he uses we in the plural so they now have lost present perfect changes into past perfect that they had lost the match the captain exclaimed with sorrow exclaimed with grief that they had lost the match the last section is commands or imperatives now when we talk about commands you can use words like instructed right ordered so even said depending upon the situation now look at these the captain said to his men march forward so normally the captain issues orders so the captain ordered his men 
Now, for such sentences, you do not use that and all. It is a command. He is giving an order. So, before the verb, you add to. So, the captain ordered his men to march forward. The captain urged his men. You can even say urged. The captain urged his men to move forward. Now, the teacher said to the students, do not waste much time on entertainment. Work hard and improve your performance. So, here the teacher, you could have it as an advice or you could have it as an instruction. So, the teacher instructed the students. Now, here if it is affirmative, we had two, two before the verb. Here it is negative, you already have do not, so you change it into not to. The teacher instructed the students or advised the students not to waste much time on entertainment. He or she, you can have any gender for the teacher here. He further, I have used instructed here, so I would choose advised. He further advised them. What does the teacher say? To work hard. So, this is affirmative to work hard and improve their performance. To work hard and and improve their performance. I will read out the answer once again. The teacher instructed the students not to waste much time on entertainment. He further advised them to work hard and improve their performance. Now, look at the next sentence. The mother said to the child, do not play with fire. So, fire is a dangerous source. So, here you could choose the term want. The mother warned the child. Once again, this is do not. So, it changes to not to. Not to play with fire. Now, look at the sentence. The manager said to the clerk, you have to complete the work by this evening. So, this is like a strong command. So, the manager, you can have ordered or even instructed If I use ordered, I will say ordered the clerk to complete. Okay. When I use instructed also, I would say instructed the clerk to complete or I could use this word and rewrite it in this way. Strictly told the clerk that he had to complete the work by that evening. He added that, see otherwise you cannot leave. So, he could not leave otherwise. So, remember all these, practice a lot. And your communicative English textbook gives you plenty of exercises, lots of questions on direct and indirect conversion. So, please work out everything patiently and I am sure all of you will score very high in your examinations. All the best students. Thank you.